Hello everybody. I'm going to talk about the media today, just for a little bit. The media swamp, uh, that ecosystem of information, um, official information. Uh, the rest of us on the outside are um, disinformation, misinformation, malinformation. Uh, disinformation means um, you're not allowing us to confuse you. That is what this information is. But we are seeing, you know, what is happening uh, with the wars and everything, that um, uh, more and more people at the moment are realizing that uh, they haven't been told the truth. They have been misinformed themselves by the official media. Um, some would go as far as saying that they have been deceived and they're being deceived now. And still what we get from the media in Western countries is more of the same official discourse. And I was thinking about this and uh, I thought about, remember in the 2016 American election, they were talking a lot about the swamp. And I thought about the media being that swamp too. Of course, the swamp is made up of many other factors. Yes, the politicians, all the rest of it. But I want to concentrate on the media. It's a swamp. What is a swamp? Is 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 uh, is mud? Is filth? Is sludge? Woos, silt, garbage, dung, refuse, full of waste matter, detritus, discarded rubbish. That is where they live. And uh, it's not exactly where lovely, cute little kittens live. I'm not going to talk about the nobility of the dog or the, um, the beauty of the eagle or the majesty of the bull. No, the fauna in these swamps, the animalia, the animal life consists of other animals few of them, the worms, maggots, maggots nest, the breeding ground for worms. What do worms do? They are the little animals that normally appear among things, bodies rotten. That is when they appear in the corpses. They kind of come out of putrefaction. The media worms nest. Such artists. But also the parasite. The parasite is slightly different because the parasite wants to keep on living, wants to keep on uh, uh, living off the same body. Um, if a change takes place, let's say that uh, a change has taken place in the international order based on rules, the parasite adapts to continue parasitizing, as it were, to continue consuming, to continue being able to suck the blood of the host. I can see those in the media too. How about the cockroach? The cockroach. The cockroach comes out only in the darkness of the night. Hmm. 
when it can consume and do its thing in the dark. Better not to be seen. Because if if you see it, you might just step on it. And 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 worse. It it the cockroach might end up uh belly up unable even to turn itself over. Another, um, the rat. Oh yes. The rat is the character that when things go wrong is the first one to run away. Jump ship. They they are the first ones to abandon the ship when something goes wrong. If fear changes sides, if things are reversed, if tables are turned, and the poor can now eat bread and the rich has to have to just look on, they can't do anything about it. The rat changes sides, leaves. They are the first ones to leave over to the other side. Next, the hyenas. Oh yes. What do the hyenas do primarily? They're scavengers, aren't they? They dine on the leftovers of others, of carcasses. They sink their teeth into others. They munch it when they are already dead. The hyenas are there so that all the other insects, when they point to others and they try to kill them or kill them all, there they are to munch over them. If you are attacked, if you are an alternative media that uh, you're being you're being sent threats or uh, you're being insulted or whatever it might be, the hyenas are there to finish you off. Oh, they're so happy doing that. The gorillas of the oligarchy. Unpleasant animals, the hyenas, don't you think? Munching on carcasses. And they always go in packs, never one by one. Because after all, they're cowards. And what they feed on is when the they give free rein to the hatred that they feel, as it were, that hatred instill in them from the other media sewage. Okay, and finally we have what? The snake, important. That animal with the fork tongue. Double language double meaning. That person in the media appears serious, rigorous, strict, truth-telling. But deep down he's about stabbing its poison on you or to wriggle about all over you until it asphyxiates you and leaves you breathless. It's not a coincidence that we see the serpent in the Garden of Eden there. The original sin, according to the Bible. It's quite a symbol. It's a being that crawls and slithers and squirms and grovels. A crawler tries to appear something serious, appears reasonable, this animal, but is silent, has a penetrating gaze, 
as if knowledgeable of everything, but it's poisonous. Fork tongue in both directions. Deceit with the tongue, deceit with the word. And I, I'm thinking that uh, these people will have to be made accountable eventually. These intellectual indigents, these politicos, yeah. third rate, those who are, and this is serious, peddling their country, peddling their homeland, their motherland, homeland vendors. Your country's sellouts. They're very much against uh, some alternative media for giving, uh, you know, a different interpretation of what happens. And they go against them with fury. And uh, it is not that those are the people who give you a different interpretation and necessarily putting worshippers. They're called putting clappers. <laughs> you know, clap. <laughs> you know, in the in the flamenco dances, there is a, a ballerina, you know, or a, or a, or a couple or a group or something, and then you have the singers, and then you have the guitarist, and but there is always a group of people who are just clapping you know they're keeping the rhythm and they are encouraging the dancers to move okay so <laughs> those of us who, do, who give a different interpretation are not clapping to Putin or to whoever but um we just have a different opinion. We just do not accept wholeheartedly the official discourse. And in any case, I mean, if you have to clap somebody, and we might all have to clap someone else at one time or another, how do you feel about um, clapping uh, Biden? or clapping Blinken, or clapping these um, elements, <laughs> Macron, and Macron and Schultz and uh, Sanchez and Maloney and all those. How about clapping Ursula van der Leyen? Van der Leyen, never get it right. Hmm. How about clapping Zelensky? Yeah. Some have done it. How about clapping, clapping um, Netanyahu? More. We don't have to choose, but we are not necessarily clapping anybody, we're just giving, giving a different opinion. And uh, the clappers are everywhere, aren't they? The official ones. They are in the French Assembly, they are in the British House of Commons, they're in the United States House of Representatives, they are in Germany's Bundestag, they are in uh, Italy's Chamber of Deputies, and... Uh, Portugal's Assembly and Spain Cortes, everywhere, clapping along. Well, it's a sham of a parody.
I don't want to talk about each, uh, you know, individual case and want to fill my mouth with muck or sundry discarded matter. It's all buffoonery. It's all a mockery. Burlesque. All this warmongering. Oh, please, let us put a stop to this exaltation of war. By these empty-headed ignoramuses. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.